Are you tired of feeling lost in tech conversations? Want to sound like a pro and actually understand what all those buzzwords mean? Stick around because in this video, we're breaking down 50 must know tech terms that every enthusiast needs to master. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Teacher Minette from ChrisAmericas.com, where we help you to level up and show the world the best version of yourself. Now, you might be wondering, why should I bother learning all of these tech terms? Well, let me tell you, understanding the language of technology is crucial for a few reasons. First, it helps you stay informed and up to date with the latest trends and innovations. Technology evolves rapidly and being familiar with the terminology helps you to keep pace with new developments. Second, it enhances your communication skills. Whether you're talking to friends, colleagues, or even customer support, using the right terms makes your conversations clearer and more effective. Third, it empowers you to troubleshoot and solve problems more efficiently. Knowing the correct terms can help you find solutions faster, whether you're searching online or following technical guides. Finally, it boosts your confidence, whether you're at work, in a study group or just exploring your tech hobbies. Having a solid grasp of tech speak makes you feel more competent and in control. So let's unlock the power of tech speak together. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of 50 essential tech terms that every enthusiast should know. Before we jump in, if you love learning about the latest in tech and love staying ahead of the curve, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell. That way, you'll never miss out on our latest videos packed with tips, tutorials, and tech insights. All right, let's dive into our first segment, hardware terms. Whether you're building your own PC or just curious about what's inside your devices, these terms are fundamental. First up, the CPU, or Central Processing Unit. Think of it as the brain of your computer, where most calculations take place. The CPU's speed and number of cores greatly influence your system's performance. For example, you might hear, the new Intel i9 CPU is a beast for gaming and content creation. Or, my laptop's CPU can't handle heavy video editing tasks. Next, we have GPU or graphics processing unit. While the CPU handles general tasks, the GPU specializes in rendering videos, images, and animations. It's crucial for gaming, video editing, and any graphics intensive applications. Gamers often discuss GPUs saying things like, I just upgraded to an NVIDIA RTX 3080, and now I can play all my games in 4K. Or this game looks amazing thanks to my new GPU. Moving on to RAM or random access memory. This is your computer's short-term memory, where data is stored temporarily while you're working on it. More RAM means better multitasking and faster performance. You'll hear about RAM in conversations like, I need to upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM because my computer slows down when I have too many tabs open, or eight gigabytes of RAM isn't enough for running multiple virtual machines. Then we have storage. SSD or solid state drives is a type of storage that's much faster than traditional hard drives. It uses flash memory to store data, which means quicker boot times and faster file transfers. You might hear someone say, switching to an SSD cut my computer's boot time from two minutes to just 20 seconds. Or my games load so much faster now that I have an SSD. HDD or hard disk drive is the older, more traditional type of storage. It uses spinning disks to read and write data. While it's slower than SSDs, it's usually cheaper and offers larger storage capacities. People often mention HDDs in contexts like, I use a two terabyte HDD to store all my movies and music, or an HDD is fine for my backup files. Now, let's talk about the motherboard. This is the main circuit board that houses the CPU, 
RAM, and other crucial components. It's the backbone of your computer, connecting all the parts together. You might hear, I need a new motherboard that supports the latest Ryzen CPUs, or this motherboard has all the ports that I need for my peripherals. Next is the PSU or power supply unit. It converts electricity from your wall outlet into a form that your computer can use. A good PSU is essential for providing stable power and protecting your components. Tech enthusiasts may say, I got a new 750 watt PSU to make sure that my new GPU gets enough power. Or a reliable PSU is crucial for my high-end gaming setup. Overclocking is the process of increasing the clock speed of your CPU or GPU beyond the manufacturer's specification to boost performance. It can be risky if not done properly, so proper cooling is important. For example, I overclocked my CPU to 4.5 GHz, and now my games run much smoother, or overclocking gave me a noticeable boost in rendering times. Speaking of cooling, a heatsink is a device that dissipates heat from your CPU or GPU keeping it cool and preventing overheating. It's usually made of metal and has fins to increase surface area. You might hear, I installed a new heatsink to keep my CPU temperatures down during intense gaming sessions. Or, a good heatsink is essential for overclocking. Lastly, thermal throttling is a safety feature where your CPU or GPU reduces its speed to prevent overheating. It ensures your system remains stable but can impact performance under heavy loads. People might say, my laptop starts thermal throttling when I run demanding software for too long or thermal throttling kicked in during my gaming session, causing some lag. And that wraps up our hardware terms. Up next, we'll dive into essential software terms. Stay tuned. Segment two, software terms. These terms are crucial for understanding how the software operates and interacts with your hardware, the OS or operating system. The OS is the software that manages your computer's hardware and provides common services for computer programs. Popular operating systems include Windows, Mac OX and Linux. You might hear, I prefer using Mac OX for its sleek interface or Windows 11 has some great new features. Next, we have API or Application Programming Interface. An API allows different software applications to communicate with each other. Developers use APIs to build software and integrate different services. For example, using the Google Maps API, I was able to embed a map in my app or the API documentation made integrating payment processing easy. Then we have IDE or Integrated Development Environment. An IDE is a software application that provides comprehensive facilities to computer programmers for software development. It typically includes a code editor, a compiler and a debugger. You might hear Visual Studio Code is my favorite IDE for coding or the Eclipse IDE as great tools for Java development. Open source refers to software that is freely available for anyone to use, modify, and distribute. The source code is open for anyone to see and contribute to. Examples include, I love how the open source community contributes to the development of Linux, or this project is open source, so you can find the code on GitHub and contribute. Firmware is the permanent software programmed into read-only memory used to control hardware devices. Firmware updates can improve hardware performance or fix bugs. For example, I updated the firmware on my router to fix connectivity issues or firmware updates can enhance the performance of your SSD. A patch is a piece of software designed to improve, update, or fix a computer program or its supporting data. This includes fixing security vulnerabilities and other bugs. You might hear I installed the latest patch to fix the security loophole. 
or the game runs smoother after applying the new patch. Next is a driver, which is software that allows your computer to communicate with hardware devices. Drivers are essential for the proper functioning of peripherals like printers, graphic cards, and more. For instance, I need to update my graphics driver to play the latest games or my printer isn't working because I need to install the driver. The kernel is the core part of an operating system. Managing system resources and communication between hardware and software. It's crucial for system stability and performance. For example, Linux is known for its stable and efficient kernel or the kernel update improved my system's performance. A repository is a central location where data is stored and managed. In software development, it often refers to a place where code is stored and version controlled, such as GitHub repositories. You might hear I pushed the latest code changes to the repository, or you can find the project repository on GitHub. Lastly, a sandbox is an isolated environment where you can run software safely without affecting the rest of your system. It's used for testing and development. For instance, I tested a new feature in a sandbox environment to avoid any issues on the live system. Or using a sandbox, I can run potentially harmful programs safely. And that's our rundown of essential software terms. Understanding these will help you navigate the world of software development and usage more effectively. Up next, we'll explore key networking terms. Stay tuned. Segment three, networking terms. Now that we've uncovered hardware and software terms, it's time to dive into networking. These terms are essential for understanding how devices communicate with each other over networks. First up, the IP address. An IP address is a unique string of numbers separated by periods and colons that identifies each device connected to a network. It's like a home address for your devices. You might hear, I need to find my IP address to troubleshoot my network, or each website you visit has its own IP address. Next, we have DNS or Domain Name System. DNS translates human readable domain names like www.example.com into IP addresses that computers use to identify each other on the network. For example, DNS servers can sometimes cause browsing issues or changing my DNS settings improved my internet speed. A VPN or virtual private network extends a private network across a public network and enables users to send and receive data as if their devices were connected to the private network. This is often used for security and privacy. You might hear, using a VPN can help protect your online privacy, or I use a VPN to access region-locked content. Next is a firewall, which is a network security system that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. For instance, the firewall blocked an unauthorized access attempt, or you need to configure the firewall settings to allow the new application. Bandwidth is the maximum rate of data transfer across a given path. It's measured in bits per second, BPS. Higher bandwidth allows more data to be transferred at once. For example, streaming HD videos requires a lot of bandwidth, or my internet bandwidth is 100 megabits per second. A router is a device that forwards data packets between computer networks. Routers direct traffic on the internet, ensuring data gets to its destination. You might hear, I need to upgrade my router for better Wi-Fi coverage, or the router assigns IP addresses to devices connected on the network. Ethernet is a network technology used for local area networks. LANs, it connects devices in a wired network using cables. For instance, connecting via Ethernet provides a more stable internet connection, or most desktop computers have an Ethernet port for network connections. A MAC address or media access control address is a unique identifier assigned to each network interface controller for communications on a network. 
It's like a serial number for your device's network card. You might hear, I need to whitelist my device's MAC address to connect to the network, or MAC addresses are used for tracking devices on a network. Latency refers to the time it takes for data to travel from one point to another in a network. It's often measured in milliseconds. MS. Low latency is crucial for real-life applications like online gaming and video conferencing. For example, high latency causes lag in online games, or reducing latency improves the responsiveness of online applications. Lastly, a packet is a unit of data transmitted over a network. It contains both the data being transmitted and control information. Packets are like envelopes containing information. You might hear data packets are routed through the internet to reach their destination, or packet loss can degrade the quality of video calls. Understanding these concepts is essential for managing and troubleshooting network connections. Up next, we'll dive into security terms to help you keep your digital world safe. Segment four, security terms. First on our list is encryption. Encryption is the process of converting data into a code to prevent unauthorized access. It ensures that only authorized parties can access and understand the information. For example, end-to-end -end encryption, secure messages sent between users, or I use encryption to protect my sensitive files. Next, let's talk about malware, which stands for malicious software. Malware is a software designed to infiltrate and harm a computer system without the user's consent. It includes viruses, worms, and spyware. You might hear, I ran a malware scan to remove malicious software from my computer. Or, be cautious of suspicious email attachments to avoid malware. Phishing is a cyber attack where attackers use deceptive emails, websites, or messages to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information such as passwords, credit card numbers, or personal data. You might hear, I received a phishing email pretending to be from my bank asking for account details. Or always double check the URL before entering login credentials to avoid phishing scams. Ransomware is a type of malware that encrypts a victim's files and demands payments, a ransom, to decrypt them. It's a form of extortion that can have severe consequences for individuals and organizations. For example, my computer was infected with ransomware and I lost access to all my files. Or regular backups are crucial for protecting against ransomware attacks. Let's revisit the firewall briefly. A firewall is a network security system that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. It acts as a barrier between your internal network and external threats. You might hear configuring the firewall to block suspicious traffic can enhance network security. Or a firewall is essential for protecting against cyber attacks. Two-factor identification, 2FA, adds an extra layer of security to your accounts by requiring two different forms of identification before granting access. This typically involves something you know, like a password, and something you have, like a smartphone. For example, I enable two-factor authentication to protect my online accounts, or using 2FA significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access. A zero-day exploit is a cyber attack that targets a previously unknown vulnerability in software. Because the vulnerability is unknown to the software vendor, there is zero days between the time the vulnerability is discovered and the first attack. You might hear hackers exploited a zero-day vulnerability in the browser to install malware on users' computers, or security researchers discovered a zero-day exploit in the latest operating system. Let's discuss white hat and black hat. White hat refers to ethical hackers who use their skills to improve security by finding vulnerabilities and reporting them to the software vendor. Black hat, on the other hand, refers to malicious hackers who exploit vulnerabilities for personal gain or malicious intent. 
you might hear I hired a white hat hacker to conduct a security audit of my company's systems or black hat hackers are responsible for most cyber attacks. Social engineering is a technique used by attackers to manipulate individuals into divulging confidential information or performing actions that compromise security. It often involves psychological manipulation and deception. For instance, the attacker used social engineering to trick employees into revealing their passwords or training employees to recognize social engineering tactics is crucial for preventing data breaches. Lastly, DDoS, or Distributed Denial of Service, is a cyber attack where multiple compromised systems are used to flood a target system or network with an overwhelming amount of traffic, causing it to become slow or unresponsive. For example, the website was taken down by a DDoS attack or using DDoS mitigation can help protect against such attacks. And there you have it, our breakdown of essential security terms. We've journeyed through a plethora of tech terminology, from hardware to software and networking to security. So, as you continue your journey through the vast realm of technology, remember the words we've uncovered today. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening adventure. Until next time, Stay curious, stay innovative, and keep embracing the wonders of technology. If you want to learn more, go to our website, chrismericos.com. I will see you in the next video. Bye.